this last short video of this lecture, I want to address a question that we'll talk about much more in the next lecture, which is we know that if you have an F bracket X module V, that you can give it an invariant factor decomposition, that it's isomorphic to this direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules. But how do you actually compute this invariant factor decomposition of an F bracket X module V? So if you're given a vector space V and a linear transformation on that vector space, how do you compute this invariant factor decomposition? A related question is, how do you compute the rational canonical form of an n by n matrix A with entries in F? We know that every n by n matrix A is similar to a unique matrix in rational canonical form. How do you find which one? And in answering these questions, a big step is going to be that we'll diagonalize the matrix X times I minus A, this matrix whose determinant gives you the characteristic polynomial, we'll diagonalize this matrix over F bracket X. Okay, so the question is, what does that mean? So A is an N by N matrix with entries in F. X times I minus A is an N by N matrix with entries in F bracket X. The elementary row and column operations come in three types. So this is something that you're probably familiar with from when you first learn linear algebra with entries in the real numbers. And this is the analog. Now we're dealing with a matrix with entries in F bracket X. So what are we allowed to do? We're allowed to interchange two rows or interchange two columns. We're allowed to add a multiple of one row or column to another. What does that mean multiple? A multiple in F bracket X. So we could take like X times the first row and add it to the third row. Or we can multiply any row or column by a unit in F bracket X. So what is a unit in F bracket X is an element of uh, F star. So the polynomial of degree zero that's non-zero. And theorem 21 in section 12.2, this last result that we'll talk about, is that using these row and column operations, we can transform the matrix X times I minus A into the diagonal matrix, which is called the Smith normal form of A, that has some number of ones along the diagonal. Then it has uh, a1 of x, a2 of x, up to am of x, where these polynomials, a1 of x up through am of x, are in f bracket x. They're each monic polynomials of degree at least one, and they satisfy the divisibility rate relations. a1 divides a2, a2 divides a3, and so on. And then the theorem is that not only can we diagonalize in this way, but these diagonal entries are meaningful. They are the invariant factors of A. So how do you compute the Smith, or sorry, how do you compute the rational canonical form of a matrix A? Well, if you have this Smith normal form, then you know all the invariant factors and you're pretty much done. So I'm not going to talk about the proof of this uh, result in lecture. This is not a proof that you're going to need to know for the exams. I'll point out that the proof is outlined in exercises 21 to 25 of section 12.2 of Dominant Foot. And the proof here depends also on some exercises from the previous section, from section 12.1 that we didn't talk about. So you should see what goes into this. But this is a result that it's OK if you just learn what it says and then get comfortable using it. So this theorem says that we can do these elementary row and column operations to transform our matrix x times i minus a into a matrix of this form. But it's not always so obvious how to do that. So in the next lecture, we'll get some practice and we'll actually compute the rational canonical form of some example matrices.